I'd like to tell you about this one day, July of 1977. We were up exploring the lake with my husband, Anthony, and my two children. We were on a dirt road, and we stopped, and we walked across the field. Now, there's nothing in sight. There's, there's no housing. It's, not a, it's a very rural place. And I went down the bank, in, and I'm sitting on this great rock down there watching the children and just enjoying the day. It got kind of strange out there. It was like turbulence in the water. And then something broke the surface of the water. And even then, I'm thinking, wow, that is a fish. But was it? What many people believed Sandra Mancy saw and photographed that day was Champ, a lake monster that has intrigued and fascinated people for centuries. I got it when it had just turned over its back. And I put the camera down and I'm watching it. It went down like this, went down, and then disappeared. So we sent it out to the photo mat. That's how unassuming it was. And when we got it back, we looked at the photograph and it was, oh my God. What did we see? Descriptions of Champ vary, but a common belief is that it is a large, wide-bodied, dinosaur-like creature with smooth scales and a long tail. There have been over 300 sightings throughout the Lake Champlain Basin, but this represents only what has been reported. Sandra Mancy's photo is the only authenticated photograph of Champ that exists today. We finally decided that we needed to have this authenticated before we make it public. And it went to the optical college and, and they proved that this photograph was genuine, never, never doctored, never, it is what it is. It is absolutely authentic. We have records that show that starting from the 1800s, there were newspaper reports of Champ. And then another blip around 1970 and the early 80s. The Native American people also have oral history on Champ. And Champ is represented in drawings from centuries ago. Then in the 1980s, 1983, uh, both New York and Vermont passed legislation protecting CHAMP from any willful act resulting in death, injury, or harassment. Over the 35 years, I have probably done hundreds of productions, hundreds of interviews, and it's always been about that little segment in time of witnessing and seeing CHAMP. And that's why here I sit, 35 years after taking the photograph, and I want to tell you how we have touched the lives of lots and lots of children just with that one conscious decision. Sandra Manzi's choice to share the photograph with the public was not easy. This one decision opened up her to ridicule and the kind of attention she was not prepared for. You know, this is something that I want to keep the integrity only because I am more interested in the legacy of the lake. It's the lake. Let's, let's, let's focus on not whether somebody believes us or not, because I really, really, really didn't care if they did or not. The photograph spoke for itself. During Champ Week that we have, we share stories about Champ, and it's always so great after we have these uh, sessions where we talk about being a believer or a skeptic with regards to that, the number of people that come up with their own stories of having seen Champ and their heartfelt stories, they're looking for an opportunity to share these stories with us. Sandra Mancy's photograph drew the kind of attention to Lake Champlain and its environment in ways that textbooks and news reports could not. Echo uses this attention to teach a deeper appreciation for and understanding of Lake Champlain, as well as the importance of all our world's watersheds. 
so it's really been a positive thing in my life because I put it into perspective. You take away from the story whatever you choose, but let's concentrate on its environment too. And I decided that maybe the best place to start with this would be with children, young children in grammar school. That kind of evolved out of this whole thing coming public, and that's where I had the most satisfaction, the most gratification was going in and telling about the sighting of Champ, and they're very, very excited about it and love it, but also impressing upon them that even a five-year-old, even a 10-year-old, a 15-year-old can make a difference in Champ's life. And children do understand what can happen when the lake is not cared for. Champ would exist. And all the animals, they wouldn't be there and all the like plankton and stuff that provide food for them, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be living because the water would be polluted, it would kill them. And it would kill the fish. And then the other, the bigger fish wouldn't be able to survive because they wouldn't be able to eat the littler fish. So it, there wouldn't be any more animals. In 2012, Sandra Mansi gave the now famous photograph of Champ to Echo Lake Aquarium and Science Center for safekeeping. I have decided that I have been a long, long time with Champ. If I did it and I did it right, it, this legacy could live on for years and years. So it will always stay in Vermont with the custodians being the Echo, taking good care of it, and carrying on with it, incorporating it. They never never judge me as far as, do you believe or do you don't you believe? And that's what I wanted. I wanted just to be able to present me. The physical photo of Champ is, of course, very important. But what's even more important is the dialogue that occurs afterwards. What is it that the photo represents? People are very interested in the topic of Champ. They love talking about Champ. But can we turn it around to think about the stewardship of the lake and the fish and the animals and think about the habitats of these animals using these stories of Champ as a catalyst for making a difference? I think I have even maybe made a little impact. Um, if, even if I had two that got into this whole thing and thought, I'm going to be an oceanographer or work with their Lake Champlain environment, I would be such a happy lady. Now that you know the champ story, what do you think you can do?